Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa time for Off the Press. While we check out the front pages of the national dailies, we do have G.D. Johnson who joins the conversation in no time. Good morning, G.D. Johnson. Thank you for joining us. Back at you, Montreal, our viewers all over the world. Good morning to you. All right. Uh, I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning and uh, looking at the front page of the leadership new newspaper, quite interesting caption uh, we have the 16 days to go, lawmakers ready to override President Mohammed Buhari's veto on electoral bill. Lawmakers ready to override President Mohammed Buhari's veto on electoral bill. Uh, that's the board caption on the leadership newspaper. President Nas, Nas lacks courage to overrule President the governor of River State is quoted in you know, some week. Eh? Civil societies regroup and demand president's assent. You also have President Mohammed Buhari, Obasanjo, governors, Mon Joseph Wires, a former Senate president who died at the age of 80. 80 yes, uh, may he so rest in peace. Amen. You also have Nembe oil spill will end soon. Operators tell community. Aisha Buhari seeks special court for rape. And please nap 13 over Kanu APC office in Feno. I mean, you remember all of the confusion that's ongoing. Uh, that's all, also another one you have uh, there uh, on the leadership newspaper. And that's the much we can actually take at this point in time. All right, we'll slide on to the nation uh, newspaper. Uh Amendment Act still is in the news. Uh, pressure on Buhari to reject electoral amendment bill uh, with some writers there. I neck here to act on Buhari's request. Uh, December 19 deadline for presidents to sign. Governors insist on indirect primary. CSO's assent will aid electoral uh, reforms. Other stories on the nation. This morning, Nigerian investors uh, lose 553 billion naira in four days. Uh, sell pressure stokes anxiety. Why censors should hold the four 2023 general elections by the NNPC? All right. More stories on the nation this morning. On the red strip below the paper, Nembe Oil Spill. Uh, leaking uh, well had to be contained in days, all right, uh, couple abducted. Above the masthead, there are other stories on the nation. Uh, Ex-Senate President Wyers uh, dies at 80. Last year, students activists to join Song Wolu in peace walk. Other stories there are 10 months after Emirates Airlines returned to Nigeria in sky. Judge to Kanu's lawyer, stop writing me directly. Uh, let's see if there are other stories uh, that are interesting. This morning, Ondo Assembly confirms uh, 14 commissioner nominees. Oshun hires 1,000 teachers. Those are some of the stories you can find on the Nation newspaper this Friday morning. Away from the Nation newspaper, let's check out the Punch newspaper this morning. The bold caption reads, Omicron. States resume testing and demand funds. Variant spreads to 23 countries. Vaccine hesitancy, funding of molecular labs, major challenges. That's what Cross River State is quoted to say. Low vaccination drive in Nigeria's rural areas, fueling transmission, says WHO. And you also have Borno, Oshun, Kogi, lead Detia states. Clean up Nigeria is quoted on that. You also have reps invite INEC over finding challenges. I take that again. Reps invite INEC over funding challenges for direct primaries. And Buhari won't sign Electoral Act Amendment. APC plots Regan, the governor of uh, River State, is quoted on that. 21 humanitarian workers, six civil servants abducted in Boronu State. And. Uh, Bribe seeking Lagos policemen shoot woman, brutalizes husband for complaining. Aisha Buhari advocates special court for rape and sexual violence cases. 2014 poll EFCC rearranged Fayoshe on amended 
1.2 billion naira fraud charges. Uh, you also have PDP chieftain kicks as Kalu hosts national ESCO. Feels dictation, uh, defection rumor. Uh, that's what you also find here. Uh, the also interesting headlines. Buhari Lawan orders Mon's second Republic Senate President Joseph Wires. Uh, this is some of the headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. Away from the punch, we'll move on next to the Daily Independent. Uh, the main story this morning, choosing PDP candidate will be turbulent. Governor Wiki with a writer alleges plan by APC to rig 2023 elections. Uh, other stories, the federal government hasn't learned from NSAS protest. Otomi Anya Momodo are quoted as saying, Kaduna to dismiss 233 teachers over fake certificate. Now, 10 months after Emirates returns with daily services to Lagos and Abuja, Buhari Atiku Ayu Mark Lawan Namani Mon Joseph Wires. Nandikan court insists on January trial date. Kiyamo Olobodio defer chances in 2023 presidential election or well, let me take that again keyamo or logodio differ on apc pdp chances in 2023 presidential election above the masthead uh, society at risk from technology and new media that's according to the speaker of the house of representatives by jabia mila police arrest 13 suspect over setting a blaze canal apc office uh, building uh, those are the stories you can find on the front page of the daily independent all right let's have uh, gd johnson share his thoughts and some of the headlines this morning uh, thank you once again for joining us uh, gd johnson uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be to be with you and once again back at you to all of you as all over the world all right so let's do it all right, uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper now. Uh, 16 days and counting. Lawmakers ready to override uh, the president's veto on electoral bill. Uh, this might just be maybe the, the second because, or maybe the third. I mean, uh, the first way experience was in June 2000. Do you think that this National Assembly, they have what it takes uh, to do that? Well, the, the issue is not about the vetoing of the bill by the National Assembly. The issue is what is the content of the electoral amendment bill that has been forwarded to the president. You will recall prior to 2019 election, the 8th National Assembly came up with an electoral reform and then the president refused to sign that bill into an heart of the nation. For me, um, the legislature are just not aware of what their right is across the globe, the exception of few where you have the fish of the legislature and the executive, which is in the form of parliamentary system of government. Outside of that, across the globe, we are seen that we have seen the executive have become so powerful that um, they get away with a lot of things which um, they don't choose to do that conceived representative democracy and this type of governance um, did not MBC at that particular point in time. And in actual sense, they have argued that we have seen the emergence of president becoming emperor, becoming emperor in, in, in most in most nations of the world. For me, it's there is it's within the prerogative of their of their office to do whatever they want to do within the confines of what the power that the constitution has given to them. Let's see whether they will exploit it. But let's see whether they will buckle under pressure or not today. However, is the content of the electoral as good as, mm, as far as I'm concerned, with the exception of the clause on 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 direct primaries, and that the only option that we have to select candidate on direct primaries, with the exception of that, every other thing in that electoral um, amendment bill is, is wonderful. You could see that the civil society. Of Nigeria are putting up pressure on the president to sign. And then you ask yourself this question in putting up this bill, what are the level of consultations, consultations that were done dealing with critical stakeholders, the party leaders, the governors at various states, um, the, the presidency, um, the, the last officers of the president to the National Assembly? What level of? Because I don't think that there should be 
too much ulla value about signing an act that is overwhelmingly passed by the National Assembly. You see that the governors are insisting that um, uh, it should be indirect primaries. And for me, most times you make laws about self-preservation. Most of the National Assembly members knew what they went through before they got their ticket because the governors own the reins at the various state level. So they are trying to insulate and protect their their emergence, which in any cases is the first rule of survival self-preservation by insisting that we should have direct primary. I think where the, the major issue concerning this deal is the issue of direct primary or indirect, indirect primary. And if you check a story in the Punch newspaper, whereby reps are inviting nine after you have passed the the the, 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 the bill, you have passed the bill, you have forwarded it for presidential assent. Reps are now inviting the INET to come up and talk about the issue of funding, the issue of funding of family, a direct families, whether INET has the resources to fund a direct families. The conduct of internal elections, primaries, which is called is meant for the parties to conduct. INEC is meant to supervise. INEC has no responsibility in conducting that. So you see, that particular section, I think if they could take that out, or if the president could forward it back to them and tell them, now you know this section, let's deal with this contentious session, or I will, I will sign this act with the understanding that there will be reconciliation between the rep and the Senate and the executive concerning some certain aspect which we don't which you don't agree with or which stakeholders are not are not in agreement with. And then you, you do the amendment and you bring the clean copy for me to sign. You must understand how democracy, how it works, how the trappings of these various organs of government actually must interface and interact in order for us to have good, good governance. There's a need for us to have to have that be. And then the other question you ask yourself is that why do we wait to 2021 at the tail end of 2022? The the the, the election process for 2023 has started in earnest. Let's face the reality of that. Governance is suffering at all levels, whether at the state, at the federal, or at, at the local government level. It's suffering because what the, everybody's eye is on 2023. If we, we check almost all the stories, it's about 2020. Here we are in 2021. So this is December 2021. Forget it. Every Nigerian should just know that what is going to take place in 2022 is about the push for 2023. Governance is going to suffer. Public policy is going to suffer. So why do we have to wait till now for us to pass that, to pass that B, forwarding it to the president? When we had the other experience the last time that they, they said that there was no time. The excuse that was given by the president in 2019 is that the time was too short for him to sign that electoral bill into an act, the amendment bill into an act, so that INEC could use it to. Well, hopefully something positive will come out of it. But outside of um, the the ones for the direct primary, I think um, provisions in the in the bill are, are, are good for 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 sustaining our democracy and our electoral process, which is critical to sustainance of democratic governance and democratic principle in in Nigeria. So we wait till December 19 to see whether this National Assembly have has the courage, the temerity, and the way with that to, to do what the Constitution has given them the right to do, which is to make laws, and then to override the president to be to be to third members of them, and putting against it, and the bill becomes an act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right, uh, uh, J.D. Johnson, uh, let's slide to the nation. Uh, I just want you to react, uh, you know, to you know, what's been trending um, across um, several spaces. Lasso students, activists to run, or to join, rather, Songwolu in peace work. Well, um, no matter, there's a particular scene in my local dialect. If lies travel for 20 years, one day the truth will come up. Nigeria lived in self-denial concerning June 12 for many, many years. And now we have come to the realization of even those that live in self-denial that actually agreed that, well, uh, that election was free and fair. Today we are living in self-denial that there was um, no bloodshed at Lekki Toolgate. Uh, we are dealing with numbers. So it's one, it's two, it's 19, it's 23. The question you need to ask yourself is, 
Does it worth it for you to for a Nigerian to lose his life for marching or for protesting? The right to protest is one of the fundamental um, values of democratic governance. The majority will have their way, and the minority will have their say. Majority will have their way, minority will have their say. Now, if the government is embarking on peace work, why peace? Then there must have been war in the state against the people. Well, those that want to join the press, those that want to join the governor should join him. And those that want the Lasso student and other activists that want to join can join. It's within the confines of their fundamental human rights. However, I've always asked this question. Public communications management is different from information dissemination or reportorial activities. Now, one of the fundamental mistakes people that manage public communications in Nigeria is that they believe that it's journalists that can handle them. It's, it's a first major. This is a pure public relations uh, effort on the part of the government. But however, you did not inform the critical stakeholders you want to match with you. First, you didn't have a meeting with them. You only announced it on here. And that's why some major players and stakeholders in the NSTARS movement did not want to join him. So last of the can join him. Another activist that want to join him and join him. Uh, 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 but for the governor to engage in peace war is the religion of duty, as far as I'm concerned. It's the governor that you won't receive people. And I hope whatever condition they are going to provide for the governor when he engages in this peace war will be provided for other people that have dissenting views. For any society to grow, you must have the same view. Any culture, any culture that does not tolerate dissent, that does not tolerate contrary opinion, is not ready for growth. It's not ready for growth. Look, God said, come let us reason together. Come with your strong reasons and comfort. Let us reason together. So any culture that does not tolerate dissent is not ready for growth. God did not give us, he gave us two eyes. He gave us night and day. All of us can sleep and put our heads together. But those that are run this society want every one of us to think in a monolithic way. Otherwise, God will have made us not, will have made every one of us to be short and to be of certain height, to be of certain shape, and to speak the same language. So I hope the same condition will be provided. We hold the governor accountable. And I hope we hold the security agencies accountable to see whatever conditions they provide for the governor in engaging in his peace work so that when we want to engage in our own work uh, work for life work for 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 youth work for employment work for light work for for water work for housing those are the type of works the governor should be in. instead of working it should be working it should be working for light working for housing, working for employment, rather than do the work, you should do the work. That's my conclusion. All right, Gide Johnson, let's also look at the Punch newspaper this morning, uh, the issue of the Omicron, Omicron variant, uh, the fact that states have resumed testing and they are demanding for funds. Now, the WHO is saying that low vaccination drive in Nigeria's rural community or areas is a reason for the transmission of COVID-19. Well, um, what's the vaccination drive globally? That's the question you need to ask yourself. And then... Um, there is mixed messaging concerning the vaccine. When the vaccine was developed, it was said that those that take the vaccine are, are, are immune from that, that, that disease. I, we have had, as far as I'm concerned, there's the politics of this COVID-19. And you can call me whatever you want to call me. You can call me uh, whatever name you want to uh, conspiracy theorist and the rest of it. Now, we've had a series of variants that have evolved over time. Delta variant, now we have the only variant. What I have told my colleagues and my friends and those that are, that are within the earshot of my opinion is that if COVID had broken out of Africa, we would have been in trouble. We could see the knee-jack approach that the world developed towards the Omicron variant that broke out of South Africa. And people should not forget that this is December. 
And in December in the Western world, they deal with flu. This is their season of flu, their normal flu. And there's a change in weather. And this COVID is a severe acute respiratory um, um, syndrome. So as a result of the change in weather, you, you discover that there's a lot of dust in the air. For us in Africa, this is dry season. This is the Amatan season. This is when the weather becomes easy and becomes dusty. You have to dust your room, dust everything. So essentially, we should be expecting something of this nature to happen. I'm not a medical doctor, but basic knowledge should tell anybody to have a clear understanding of what will happen. Now, what do they do? They provided a label for it. They provided a label for it. When you do labeling, you do pigmentation. So they identify it with a particular region, with a particular place, with a particular country. It was very, very hard for the world to associate COVID with China. But it was easier for them to associate the Delta variant with Latin America. And it was easier for them to associate the Omicron variant with Africa and South Africa. So when the WHO president, who happens to be the former minister, of, of 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 the former minister of um, of health in in Ethiopia and then um, who the former president of United Arab America called it lucky of of the nation where the COVID nineteen broke out from. What, what what do you get? I listened to an interview of the vice chairman of African Intervention and he said something about the politics of this person that I don't know whether it's Botswana or something like that that paid higher than what is normally paid for, for the vaccine. Yeah, they didn't get the vaccine. Why the entire world is getting that, why the Western world is going about 60, 70% vaccination rate? What is happening? You remember what they was said when this thing broke out, that there's trouble in Africa. They thought we are going to die like pigs, and we are going to die like chicken, and we are going to just, there will be a lot of death. But God in a simple mercy, as a way of doing, as a way of doing these things that give up the immune system. Because if going by the COVID protocol and what has been associated with it, and the lack of resources and the technical know-how and the and the and the medical facilities that are required, the drugs, you should know that Africa should have been should have been wiped off, should have been wiped off the map by now. The Western one needs to look at how not ordering the technology, not ordering the information, and not ordering the vaccine. It should be shared across, 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 it should be shared across board so that um, everybody will be vaccinated. Everybody will be vaccinated and when we get the vaccination, we see whether actually the vaccine that has developed is actually meant to deal with that particular problem. Or we have created a problem for the big pharmaceutical company. There's what they call the big pharma to make money. Some companies that have almost gone out of extinction, that had, that had no business line again, they have been they have come back to life as a result of this COVID, as a result of this COVID nineteen. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but just this information information together, you need to put companies that you do that were household names before, then then we didn't hear anything about them. They even pulled out of Nigeria after a while as a result of the polio polio vaccination, the effect of the polio vaccination in northern Nigeria then. And then all of a sudden these companies uh, are, are, are they doing it for free? Are they doing it for humanity? Well, it's left for African nations to know how they should react. When that happened and Trump places a ban, placed a ban on African countries, they said it was xenophobic. Now Joe Biden is there. When the Omicron variant, the vaccine has been developed and everything. The place the man on African court. And then the African representative in WHO went ahead and said it's because no vaccination drive. What has it done to ensure that this vaccination drive in Africa is improved? All right, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. G.D. Johnson, uh, let's talk about another story uh, from the Daily Independent. You are a lecturer, you are in the teaching profession. I just really need you to react concerning that Kaduna to dismiss 233 teachers over fake certificates. Well, it's, it's not, there's nothing new. Probably just there's nothing new. It's just that states don't report this on the pages of newspaper. If once they do certificate validation and they check the validation, we just discover that there are a lot of people that are parading 
priding themselves as having one certification or the other which they do not possess. If you go to the National Assembly, if you go to the State Assembly, if you go to many workplaces, you see a lot of people using certificates, claiming to have one certificate they don't have. Um, so it's, it's nothing it's nothing surprising to me, it's nothing new. Every, every now and then you see um, organizations writing schools, writing the registry to, to validate to to validate or invalidate the claims that their employees have made with respect to to, to the certificate they possess. So we've seen a situation whereby people claim to have PhD and they didn't have PhD. And uh, so every school it's just that they don't they don't report they don't report it. And it tells you the rot within the system. Why uh, what does it take for, for people to validate whether someone has certificate or not certificate. He's been employed. There are people in the civil service that are meant to do that. How many years have they been in service? Why can't you write the schools to ensure that they reply you to see whether their certificates uh, they claim are genuine or they are they are they are fake. So imagine the kind of knowledge those teachers will have will have will have passed across to the student over time. So as far as I'm concerned, those ones should not only be dismissed and they should be denied the entitlement. Because you can't deceive the state and I mean, deceive the state and destroy the lives of other <coughs> and destroy excuse me, please, and destroy the future by imparting fake knowledge and inadequate knowledge on the pupils they are they are teaching. And it puts you recall uh, the governor of Cardinal carried out the controversial during his first term where he, he conducted tests for all the teachers in the state and then some teachers were weed out of the system. And I hope it's a cleaning process and it should be done across the board so that the right people that have the right qualification will be at the right at the right place. So from top to bottom, you go to the presidency, you come to the National Assembly, you have people parading with peace at you know, one of the major major contention for twenty twenty three election is that whether the president actually had the qualification which he claimed to have gotten. And we have seen, even in, 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 in 1999, the governor of my state, then in 19, I'm from Lagos State, the governor of my state faced an issue with, with relation to certificate, whether it's from the University of Chicago or it's from Chicago State University. So this is, it's, 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 it is what it is in our country. But those that are meant to do what they are supposed to, if they don't do what they are supposed to, we live with the reality of people parading themselves with fake certificates and fake identity. All right, let's also share your thoughts on uh, another headline on the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, PDP chieftain kicks as Kalu hosts national, uh, you know, ESCO. So this might just be another defection move. We are not seeing defection. Let's wait for the primaries. Think that story with what Wiki said. Wiki said them. Um, um, in the in 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 Delhi Independent, choosing PDP candidate will be turbulent. That's according to Wiki, and then um, um, it's very clear to everyone. Um, this the political class are, are 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 chess players. They are chess players. They play games, and then if if you understand chess, you understand that sacrifices are made. Not for it is the end game that matters. It is not. It is not the game as you are playing. It's the end game. How do you get to the end game? You can sacrifice your bishop, sacrifice your pawn, sacrifice your knight, and then as long as you win the end game, as long as your king is not captured, you, you win the So it's about the end game. So we see that this thing you are seeing is about positioning. Some people are positioning themselves for the vice president. So they are doing the plantation. So I can tell you, for someone that has observed the political landscape for a, for a very, very long time, well, Oji, Oji Uzokalu might have seen his chances. APC has been the, as regards of getting either the vice president or, or running for the presidency. So you might think that, you know what, it would be better for me to go to PDP, where there is every likelihood that the presidency might be shown to the, to the south, south or the southeast, or where likely that, and if the presidency does not come from there, probably they zone the presidency to the northeast where there has never been any precedent, and then, okay, 
the vice president will come from the north, from the southeast or south south. So it's about positioning. So as far as I'm concerned, those that are true, they, they have an understanding inside. But with my level of involvement and understanding of Nigerian politics, I can predict that you have not seen anything yet. You have not seen. You have not seen. Why did we say it's going to be turbulent? It's going to be turbulent because you see a lot of factors. You see presidential candidates, perennial presidential candidates, like Pusa Arabi that will not say anything about answers, that will not say anything about what is going on in society. They will come out when presidential election is coming out. You see that Kolaza Aki has declared his own intention. You see that Tampua will declare his own intention. Um, last week, um, Atiku went and had business summit in the Northeast, with the Northwest business business summit in, in, in Gombe. I think it was on Thursday or it was Thursday. No, it was not last week, it was this week. It was it was this week that the business summit was done. So let's wait for it. That's why they are kicking, because you know, once it crossed over as the chief people of the National Assembly of, 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 of the Senate, they will they will just hand over the structure to him. And I saw a picture. This is what I tell people. Don't worry yourself about Nigerian culture. I saw a picture of Oji Uzokal, Theodore Oji, and uh, the present governor, Ikiazu, the three of them, I think two weeks ago or last week, the three of them had one function. At one function, I know it was just, I just, I just laughed. I said, these are the people that have held up their state hostage since 1999. You know, Abia State is called God's own country. I saw them. And they will say they are fighting. And people have killed themselves. They have fought themselves. Friends have become enemy of one another because of this, 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 these characters. These characters that will move from one party to the other, that will fight themselves. And at the end of the day, in the night, they will become friends. The last in Inogun State, there was this picture of Amosu Benga Daniel. And the present governor that Kwabiyo, when Amosu was uh, when Benga Daniel was campaigning to be the governor of Ogun State, the two of them inside the truck, one was holding the microphone, one was holding the umbrella, one was holding the uh, air. Like Nigerians, I have never have hope, don't have hope in any Nigerian political class. And when they tell the move to PDP, the move is about self, it's about self survival. They don't care about you. It's about power. It's, it's about it's about the it's about the lust for power. They, they crave power. They like that office. Some of them have been in government since 1999. And you ask yourself this question, what have they done? And we have said it. I, did it, I'm going to ask questions. That uh, the majority will have their way, but the minority, by the responsibility placed on me as a member of the fourth estate of the REB, provided for by the section 22 of 1999 Constitution as amended, that I shall be the watchdog of the society and we shall hold the government and we, have, we ask them to give an account. We ask them, give an account of what you have done. Now, why would some people be parading themselves to the presidential candidate? They've been in the seat of power and conduct since 1999. Since 1999, you have been, what have you done? More than a quarter of a century. They've been in power across, but see them in the National Assembly. Since when has the Senate president been in, in the National Assembly, since when has the Speaker of the House of Rep been in the National Assembly? And the Speaker went ahead to say a story that um, technology and new media is destroying the society. Technology and new media is driving the latest car. He didn't know that that car is, 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 was, was driven by technology. He's using the latest phone. He didn't know that that phone was driven by technology. He's living in houses that is powered by generators and not by national lights or national grid. He didn't know that that is driven by, by, by technology. So let's, when we get to that, we ask, some of us will ask questions because we have privilege of representing the people, of being invited to come and talk and be, be the voice of the people. So we we'll, we'll surely speak about those issues. We ask them questions, questions, questions. All right. Um, thank you so much, um, G.D. Johnson. Um, he is the chief lecturer of the uh, Nigeria Institute of Journalism. And we have been looking at um, what the papers are saying this morning. We'll call it off the press.